Hi there, it's Mike here again, ready for another Discover Music and Science video for the Royal Albert Hall. I'm a musician, I play this fantastic beast called the tuba, and I'm also a lover of all things science. In this video I want to talk about hearing ranges, hertz, and also soundproofing. We might even touch on uh, some songwriting as well later on. Firstly though, let's discuss the range from what low notes and high notes humans can hear. So frequency is measured in hertz and tells us how fast something is vibrating. Humans can hear from as low as 40 hertz and through to as high as 20,000 hertz. What that means is we're hearing notes that vibrate 40 times per second through to something that vibrates as high as 20,000 times a second. Now the tuba, plays at the very bottom of the orchestra, it's actually right at the very bottom range, or can play notes right at the bottom range of what humans can hear. I'm going to play you some of those really low notes now. Really low stuff, isn't it? But we can definitely hear it. Um, to get the higher notes though, we're going to need something uh, a bit more advanced than a tuba. Uh, we're going to need a signal generator, a sound generator. Luckily, I have one ready to go. Okay, so here's my signal generator that I found online. Uh, these can create notes across the whole range of sound, from the really low ones all the way through to some of the really high notes. Now, if I press play, um, we should, I'll press play now, should get a sound coming out that we can all hear. That sound, incidentally, is 440 hertz, or 440 vibrations per second. That's the same as my tuning fork from one of the other videos. As I say, it can go to the really low sounds. We can't really hear them very well. But we can also go... So up at 10,000 hertz is pretty uncomfortable. Then going even higher, and I stop hearing it around here, about 16,000. I can't hear it, but I'm sure some of you will be able to. All the way up. There we go, I'll stop that just in case some of you can still hear it. Now, I reckon it's time for a little signal generator experiment from you guys. I'd love it if you were to find a signal generator online uh, and do some experiments at home. Have a listen to what your hearing aid range is. Um, and then also do some experiments with your family members. You might find that some of the older members of your family have slightly worse hearing than you do. Enjoy. So that's the hearing range of humans covered. In fact, other animals have different hearing ranges to us. So for example, an elephant can hear notes as low as just five hertz, so five vibrations per second. Whereas a dog can hear up to 60,000 hertz, much higher. Incidentally, you may have come across a dog whistle at some point, where we can't hear the whistle, but the dogs can. Uh, in fact, all animals have different hearing ranges, and here's a little uh, table of uh, a few animals and their hearing ranges. Just notice how high the dolphin is, for example. Quite amazing. Now, being at home, we all probably want to know a bit more about soundproofing uh, than we do. And there are some really good, uh, easy ways to fix soundproofing. Um, and also some very fancy words that we need to learn and understand as well. Uh, so the four key things when it comes to soundproofing are reflection of sound, refraction of sound, absorption of sound, and then distance. And all four reduce the amount of noise going on uh, magnificently. Now if we think about these little bits and pieces, reflection of sound is fairly, probably the most obvious that's a big thick wall that bounces all the sound back into the room. Um, then refraction of sound is a bit more tricky and that's where um, walls have lots of different angles on them and so the sound coming in, some bounces that way and some bounces another way. You might have seen in some recording studios you'll see lots of interesting patterns on the walls, that's to create a refraction or, and, uh, of sound there. Um, now the, th the third thing is absorption of sound, so really soft things absorb sound really well. So things like putting carpets everywhere, big thick carpet, rugs, uh, soft things on the walls, uh, again 
in in uh, some um, recording studios, you'll have seen quite a lot of foam on walls. That's to, to absorb as much sound as possible. And then the final thing is distance. It seems really obvious, but the further away you are from something, the quieter it is. But it's actually, it's not, um, it's not a standard rate. So you, if you double the distance, you don't double the quietness, you actually quadruple the quietness, which is quite a cool thing. Now, back when we were allowed out of our houses, I actually did a little video uh, in the Royal Albert Hall with my friend Paul again. Um, and he makes a right old racket on the stage of the Royal Albert Hall. And then we um, do a little experiment to see what it will sound like as far away as we can get. And that is at the very top of the hall in the gallery. It's quite an amazing difference, the noise. So I hope you enjoy this video. So here I am on stage at the Royal Albert Hall. My friend Paul here is really noisy. There's loads of ways to make him quieter though. One is to move further away. I'm gonna go all the way up there. So we're now up at the top of the Albert Hall in the gallery. You can just about see Paul on stage down there. He's going to play, play that tune again. Uh, it should sound a lot quieter just because we've moved further away. It was quieter. OK, so now we're going to try to do a live soundproofing demonstration. Going off those four things that we just talked about, reflection, refraction, absorption, and distance, but just using things we've got lying around at home. In fact, what we're gonna to try to do is soundproof my um, speaker here. So I'm just gonna press play. And what we have is a never ending drum beat that I've created. You can all hear that. So first things first, we're going to start the uh, process of um, soundproofing by putting it into a box. This box, rather brilliantly, has some polystyrene. That polystyrene is a good absorber, so the absorption starts. Still hear it though, can't you? Then it goes inside the box. And that's the start of a reflection. We've got a hard surface there. So we've got reflection, we've got absorption. I can still hear it though. So I've got another box, in fact. Here's my other box. Now, um, refraction is quite tricky um, without kind of specialist equipment. So instead of specialist equi equipment, I'm using lots of socks. So in my second box, I've got socks. Let me get some more socks. Lots of socks, I'm going to really stuff it in here. Loads and loads of socks. I haven't worn socks for weeks, especially for this video. Let's get really stuffed full of socks. I can still just about hear it. It's definitely a lot quieter. Now, so I've got my second box. So I've got, to be clear, I've got uh, some absorption from the polystyrene. I've got the first shell of reflection. I've got my sock layer which is my kind of um, uh, uh, ref refraction. Uh, and then I've got another outer layer. Now, I've got a trump up my sleeve. This, I can still just about hear it, but in the background, I have a chest of drawers. I'm gonna put it in the chest of drawers, and that chest of drawers is full of summer clothes. Now those summer clothes are a good absorber, and the chest of drawers is wood. And behold, we have pretty much eliminated the sound, which is fantastic. Now it's your turn to try and soundproof something. I, I want you to hit pause on the video and see if you can uh, 
soundproof anything you like. Maybe your mobile phone, or maybe if you've got a Bluetooth speaker, see what you can do. Uh, it's amazing what you can do with those four things. Reflection, refraction, absorption, distance, and maybe a fifth thing, socks. So all of these things I've mentioned in these videos are part of the national curriculum. Um, and you'll be studying them at some point in your schooling. Uh, so it's probably worth just trying to remember them. Uh, here's a slide summarising all the things that I think are really important to remember about sound. A really useful thing to do with these bits of information, and I think a really cool way to help you remember some of, some of the stuff, is to try to turn these facts into a song or a rap. And in fact, I think you should definitely try this. The best way to start is with the words. Some of the facts are already quite rhythmical. For example, frequency is measured in hertz, kind of rolls off the tongue quite naturally. Uh, why don't you explore writing some lyrics first, creating some rhyming couplets maybe, and seeing what you can come up with. Once you have those lyrics sorted, it's time to think about what sort of song you want to create. Writing music is all about making decisions essentially. For example, is it a fast song or a slow song? What style of song is it even? Once you've thought about this, and if you have an instrument at home, why don't you try and come up with a melody and, and even some chords to go with it. If you create something ace, which I suspect you will do, uh, please do send it into the Royal Albert Hall for us to have a listen to. So the Royal Albert Hall has loads of other videos for you to explore online during this lockdown period. Um, I hope you've enjoyed these Discover videos. Cheers.